Hey you guys, welcome back to the fire pit. It's Mike from Craster. Hey, you know what? You got me. We don't have a big skyscraper. We don't have a helipad. But you know what? We do kind of have a boardroom back here. And uh, we do our, our Craster cabin is our, our world headquarters. Um, but today, we are going to bring something really special to you guys. Um, we have brand new field researchers that sent us some video, Laura and Ariel. Um, they did an amazing job. They're fishing out of Arizona. Now they aren't just fishing for any crawfish, they're fishing for an invasive species of crawfish. And it's tearing up their waterways, they're doing a wonderful thing by catching them. You will not believe what they're going to do with the crawfish once they catch them. It's just so amazing. Now, i got to tell you, they also inspired the people of Craster. We're going to do a Craster crawfishing camp next year in Arizona, and it's going to be inspired by Laura and Ariel. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Now, no. Uh, Nathan, field researcher Nathan, he's coming in to the Craster cabin today and uh, when you get done watching this video, we're going to talk about a lot of the details. Now come with us, let's go from Idaho and let's jet set clear down to Arizona. Here we go. This is Laura and Ariel from Arizona. In Arizona, Crayfish are non-native invasive species. All crayfish are non-native invasive species. So what we have decided to do is to work on removing crayfish from native streams that have native fish in them. And afterwards we take them to one of the wildlife rehabilitation centers uh, in Scottsdale where we both live. Today we're up on the Mugione Rim We've got our expandable net traps set, and we are trying to be patient, which is very difficult. So while we wait for the crawdads to come into our traps, we like to dip net with bacon on a stick, and already we've probably caught a couple dozen. We don't catch very big ones because we are out here during the daytime, and I don't believe that the species that we have out here are very large. So we won't be contenders for the big claw contest, but what we're trying to do is catch all crayfish to help get them out of this stream that has native fish in it. So here's Ariel emptying one of our traps. We always get a lot of little minnows in our traps, so we're very careful about keeping the trap down in the water so while we get the crawdads out, then we can dump the fish back in, their little native speckled dace. So we want to make sure that they are safe here in the water. This is always a good pool right here. We have about three traps in there and this trap was pretty full when she started emptying them. We're also trying to get again the native fish out. We were very lucky today. We had a couple of families with quite a few children and I gave them some buckets and some nets and they caught quite a few crawdads for us and we took the opportunity to tell them that crawdads in Arizona should always be removed if possible and not put back. This is one of our native garter snakes that is also fishing in the water today. We can see the crawdads coming up to the shore on the strings of our traps. I guess they smell the fish that are in the traps. And every time we try to dip net them, well, sometimes we're successful, sometimes we're not.
So she's dumped all the crawdads into a bucket of water just in case there's any fish in there. And then we just pull them out one at a time. We came up there here this morning with a group of people who came to look for butterflies. When we got here, we just quickly dropped a few traps out so that we could pick them up when we left. And I'm surprised that we have got half of a big bucket. And usually what we have found is a half of a big bucket is around 300. And this is the same area where last week when we were camping, we took out 58 pounds of crawfish from this area. And honestly, I'm surprised that there are still this many left. Well, we're all packed up to go, but I don't know if you can see them or not, but there are a whole lot of crawdads that are crawling right around here where our traps have been, all attracted by our bait. So while I'm putting stuff back in the truck, she is just catching them one after another with uh, lunch meat on a stick and uh, doing pretty darn well with it. Oh, here comes a big one. Mm -hmm. For us, that's a pretty good size one out here. There we go. Welcome back to the Creaster Cabin. Nate, it's good to see you again. You guys know Nathan. He's been in a past video. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate you bringing me back out. You know, the first time that I did this, I had so much fun. I mean, look, we're at the Creaster Cabin. I know. Right? And it was a good thing to do. And so when you called me again, it was easy to say yes the second time. Excellent, excellent. Can you believe the footage that Laura and Ariel shot in Arizona? Wasn't that neat, them catching that invasive species of crawfish? You know, Mike, it was really neat for a couple of reasons. Uh, and I want to point these out. Number one, they volunteer their time. They don't get paid to do this. Um, number two is that when they take the crawfish out, there's some benefits to it. They are uh, an invasive species. They're are helping to uh, uh, take out some of the fish that are there that should be there. They're muddying up the water a little bit. They're causing some erosion. And so when they take them out, it really helps with that. But, uh, but when they take them out, they take them down to the Southwest Wildlife Conservation Center. Now, Mike, do you want to tell them why that's kind of neat? Yeah, yeah, the Conservation Center, what they do is they take injured animals or animals that are in need and they uh, rehabilitate them. And a lot of times they try to reintroduce them into the wild. And they have, uh, they've actually helped out the Mexican gray wolf, which is endangered. Um, they've got mountain lions, foxes. Right now, what you're going to go see is they're going to take these crawfish that Laura and Ariel caught and they're gonna take them down and they're gonna put them in and, and, and let raccoons that they're rehabilitating, they're gonna have meat and wild food, get used to eating wild food. You don't wanna eat human food. You don't wanna, you know, you introduce something back to the wild. You want them to live in the wild and have skills to live in the wild. Let's go down right now, Nate, and let's go to the conservation center and let's watch some raccoons eating the crawfish. Let's do it.
wow, that was really neat watching those raccoons eat the, the crawfish and, and getting to be reintroduced back into the wild, eating that wild food. Very neat. Now, Laura, Ariel, I need to tell you something. I've got some Craster Field Researcher shirts I'm sending you, and uh, we've got some big plans we're going to tell you about. What do you think all that, Nate? Well, first and foremost, uh, your video is very inspiring, Laura and Ariel, so I wanted to welcome you to the team. Welcome to be a field researcher now, part of the Craster team. Um, did you hear about how they got into doing this, Mike? How? Uh, Laura and Ariel had a friend named Jim. Uh, he would originally uh, jump out and catch these crawfish, and, and he called it his crawfish camp. Uh, what a really great thing. He's not able to anymore, so they've jumped in in his stead to continue the tradition, and now they're, uh, now they're doing it themselves. And uh, it's kind of a touching story. Well, it's touched us enough that uh, we have some plans for next year, Mike. You want to tell them what it's all about? Yeah, we're going to do crawfish in camp, and we're going to do it next year in Arizona. And uh, what we're going to do is we are going to come with a team of field researchers and we're going to fish a lot of the crawfish out of those streams. Now, if you want to come along, you're more than welcome. If you're a subscriber and you want to come on a family vacation or something to Arizona, we're going to put up the exact dates, probably be in July, on our Facebook. You're welcome to come join us. I'm going to do a seminar on trap building and good bait. I've got other field researchers. Uh, you've met Jerry. He's coming along with me. Mike Friel is coming clear from California. He's going to do a little seminar on crawfish identification. It's going to be so great. You know, great video, you guys. Thanks for, for submitting that to us. Um, we just really appreciate everything you've done. And if you want to submit a video, feel free. And if you like this video, like this video. If you really like us, subscribe. And uh, you can even be a team member. Have a great day, and we'll catch you later. Let's go fishing, Mike. Let's go fishing.